Hello gorgeous people, I've just got the Samsung Galaxy A6 2018 in and I'm going to do a quick side by side with the Nokia 7 Plus because they are both about the same sort of ask and price, they're both mid-range handsets that pack some pretty decent specs and some decent features for the ask and price, so which one might be best for you? Well first of all, as you can see if you stick them side by side like so, Nokia 7 Plus is a bit of a beast in comparison with the Galaxy A6 2018, or should I say, the Galaxy A6 2018 is actually reasonably compact, it's only a 5.6 inch. Never thought I'd say that a couple of years ago, only 5.6 inches, but that's actually reasonably compact these days compared with the 6 inch, more standard size Nokia 7 Plus. We actually really, really like the uh, the finish of the Nokia 7 Plus. It does look quite premium despite the mid-range asking price. It's got this lovely bit of copper banding that stretches right away around the edges and uh, just a little detail in as well, such as around the camera uh, lenses there as well and around the edge of the fingerprint sensor just to help it really sort of stand out. It looks very neat indeed. It sports a traditional sort of candy bar style finish as well, so it's quite rectangular. It's maybe not the most comfortable to hold, especially as it is quite a chunky monkey as well, quite a, uh, a big handset. Uh, and there's not much in the way of one-handed modes, unfortunately, either as well. You'll basically just have to uh, stretch all the way up to that top there in order to pull down the notifications panel. In comparison, of course, the Galaxy A6 2018, bit easier to handle. Uh, it's much, much easier to stretch up to the top to pull down the notifications panel and things like that. And an even better news, despite the fact that it's a more compact handset, you do actually have a one-handed mode as well, which you can turn on like so. And then what I'm going to do is do it so you can just tap the home button three times, and then back in our desktops, quick triple tap, and there you go. Nice dinky uh, screen, and you can flick around and do all the usual stuff in here. You can load up apps, all the rest of it. And uh, when you're done, basically just uh, tap outside, and then you're back into full screen mode. Unfortunately, in terms of the general design, the Samsung Galaxy A6 2018 is, to put it frankly, a little bit dull. It just kind of looks like your bog standard smartphone. It feels quite nice. It does have an aluminium finish to it, and it does feel nice and silky smooth uh, when you're fondling in it. It should prove nice and rugged, just like the Nokia 7 Plus, which is, again, made of aluminium. But in terms of general design, features and the rest of it, definitely the Nokia is the best one in our eyes. The Nokia 7 Plus is also splash proof as well, so you can get it quite moist and it won't uh, throw up any kind of fuss whatsoever, whereas you don't get that kind of reassurance on the Galaxy A6 2018. That said, it can probably take a bit of a splash in and be absolutely fine. And of course, both of these phones do sport a rear mounted fingerprint sensor as well. In the case of the Samsung Galaxy A6 2018, it's actually kind of built into this camera lens chassis bit that sticks out, uh, which can make it a little bit hard to uh, find when you're sort of groping around. Sometimes you'll accidentally be tapping the camera lens instead. It's not the best, uh, but to be honest, it is perfectly accurate. So just a quick tap and you're more or less straight into your desktops. Uh, very few issues with that one. Uh, in terms of the Nokia 7 Plus, it's once again rear mounted, as you can see there. It's nice, completely separated from the, the camera module. And again, a quick tap and you are more or less straight into your desktops with about a half second delay. So in terms of responsiveness, they are more or less the same. Quick tap now. And there you go, so ever so slightly quicker on the Nokia 7 Plus, but not exactly a reason to buy it over the Galaxy. However, sticking on the theme of security, the Galaxy A6 2018 does, does impressively have a bit of face recognition built in there. So I've got my face all registered, all you need to do is just tap the power button, hold your mug reasonably close for a short duration, and there you go, you're into the desktop. So it isn't the swiftest, it's nowhere near the speed of the likes of the OnePlus 6, for instance, uh, which is of course a, a more expensive premium handset. Uh, so you do have to be a bit patient, there you go, you're eventually into it. And it can be a bit uh, awkward in uh, tricky lighting, if you're in harsh sunlight, if you're in a low light situation, it can struggle a bit as well, unfortunately. Right, so what about those displays? Well, of course, it is a smaller display here on the Galaxy, as I mentioned before, it's 5.6 inch. It's a Super AMOLED panel as well, which Samsung, of course, is a big fan of. Pretty much all their phones rock a bit of Super AMOLED. Uh, compared with the Nokia 7 Plus, which has a 6 inch IPS display. Now, the output is definitely different between these two. Uh, they do tend to be slightly more punchy, vivid colors here on the Galaxy A6 um, because of that Super AMOLED display. Um, sort of veers more towards artificial looking images, whereas the Nokia 7 Plus actually throws up quite realistic looking uh, photos and the rest. The Nokia 7 Plus also boasts slightly sharper images as well. It's a full HD plus screen compared with the HD plus here on the Galaxy A6 2018. Although that said, you know, because it's the smaller screen, you kind of struggle to notice any difference to be honest. You have to get in real close. Even then, 
you'd sort of you'd have to look really really close really squint to see a difference between the two and as you can see they both sport an elongated aspect ratio as well it's 18.5 by 9 here on the galaxy and 18 by 9 here on the Nokia 7 Plus and both are well suited to a nice bit of Netflix action as you can see the video looks nice and crisp and clear in both cases so what about the actual software itself anyway? Well, you get Android Oreo in both of these cases. Though it's a nice fresh vanilla version here on the Nokia because it's an Android One handset. So no tinkering whatsoever by Nokia itself. As on the case of the Galaxy A6 2018, it does support Samsung's overlay. Now, as you can see, the overall look and feel hasn't really changed that much compared with the Nokia. Some of the icons look a bit different. That's about as extreme as it gets in terms of the general layout and stuff. But you do get a bunch of bonus features thrown in here as well, such as that facial recognition, for instance. And if you dive into the settings, you'll find some more bonus stuff to thrust away on there as well. So, for instance, we've got the advanced features. You'll find there's the, uh, the game feature, the game launcher. Uh, which basically just helps you to avoid being distracted while you're playing your games, it can boost performance, things like that. Uh, and if you dive into it, of course, got the one handed mode, which we've already touched on, whole bunch of gesture support, so lots of bonus bits thrust on there as well. It's two very different chipsets running the show as well. It's an Exynos 7870 of Samsung's own division here on the Galaxy A6. Whereas in the case of the Nokia 7 Plus, it uses Qualcomm Snapdragon 660. And general performance can be a little bit stuttery, as ably demonstrated there by the Nokia 7 Plus, in the case of both of these handsets, to be perfectly honest. Uh, but everyday performance is absolutely fine. It'll do what you need it to do. They can both play the likes of PUBG, albeit with a low frame rate, low detail level. Uh, and uh, yeah, general app, app use and everything, absolutely fine as well. So as long as you're not super demanded and hoping for a silky smooth performance, you should be happy with either. You see if we just do a quick sort of tap side by side, you can see a little bit of a delay on the excess there, loading up Chrome, but sometimes uh, you'll find that the exact reverse happens. Sometimes the Nokia stutters a little bit and the Samsung takes a little while. That's why we don't bother doing these side by side uh, performance tests because frankly, it all depends on what's running in the background, what you're actually using the phone for. You do get slightly more memory, however, on the Nokia 7 Plus, which helps out a little bit. It's a choice of either 4 or 6 gigs. I believe it's just 4 gigs here in the UK is the only option. And in the case of the Galaxy A6, again, I believe there's a 4 gigabyte model, but here in the UK, it's just the 3 giga, which is what we've got here. When it comes to the battery life, however, the Nokia has the clear advantage. It's got a whopping 3,800 milliamp cell stashed away in there, which means you'll basically get at least a day and a half, closer to two days of life, depending on how much you're actually using it. In the case of the Galaxy A6, though, it doesn't uh, disappoint by any stretch of the imagination. Where on earth? I always forget it's tucked away in device main and stupid Samsung. There we go. Uh, so it's a 3000 milliamp cell. And once again, it'll happily last a full day and a half between charges as long as you're not absolutely hammering it. So as long as you just want to make it to the end of the day, either of these are fine. If you want to make it to a couple of days, the Nokia will just about manage it. And of course, you do have the usual battery saver modes when you need them as well. As for the storage, again, the Nokia is the winner. So once again, stay in device maintenance here and just dive into storage. You get 32 gigabytes of storage here on the Galaxy. On the Nokia, you get 64 gig. And as you can see, I've used up a good chunk of that already. Barely touched it on the Samsung here. Uh, but you've got plenty of space in either case, really, for a decent selection of apps and media. And you can expand them in both cases as well, uh, using a micro SD memory card of up to 256 gigs again in either case. Which brings us nicely onto the camera tech. Now it's no surprise to see the Nokia 7 Plus of course sporting a dual lens snapper, just like the majority of smartphones these days. However, Samsung has bucked the trend. It's actually gone for a single lens snapper, which it more favors. It's only recently getting into the whole sort of dual lens uh, setup and everything. So let's start with the Samsung. You get 16 megapixel lens. Uh, it's a sole lens, as mentioned before. And it's an f1.7 aperture, so it's actually pretty good in low light. The tests I've done so far seem to come out pretty well. In the case of the Nokia 7 Plus, it is a dual lens setup. You get a 12 megapixel primary lens, which I believe is this one down below. And then up at top, you get a 13 megapixel secondary lens. And this gives you a two times optical zoom, so you can get a bit closer to whatever you're trying to snap. Now, one of the benefits of that dual lens setup means you can get a bit of the live Bokka mode on the go, which basically just snaps onto your subject, keeps them nice and sharp, and blurs everything in the background. Uh, so it just really helps them to stand out. Quite a neat effect that you don't have to stand quite far back in the case of the Nokia to actually get it to work. You also have a few other little bonus modes, such as the bothy mode, which allows you to use the front and the rear camera at the same time to shoot a picture. And as you see here, you've got panorama mode, you've got full manual controls as well. Uh, so let's just dive on into those. And this just allows you to fiddle with the likes of ISO level, white balance, stuff like that. So if you know what you're doing, you want to get a very precise kind of shot, you can use that. 
Here on the Galaxy A6 2018, you don't get that uh, that sort of dual lens uh, portrait mode, unfortunately. But what you do get is a pro mode, so you can again fiddle around with the likes of the ISO and the white balance, so you can get those exactly what you want. In this case, you get a couple of other little bonus modes as well, such as the sports mode, which is just basically supposed to allow you to lock onto a, your subject, and even if they're moving quite fast, get a crisp shot. To be honest, bit hit and miss and the night mode, which just basically helps you to capture a low light shot. Although to be fair, in standard auto mode, does a pretty good job of that anyway. If you want to shoot video, you can jump into the settings. You can go all the way up to Ultra HD 4K on the Nokia 7 Plus, or just keep it at that standard 1080p full HD level. And the case of the Samsung, unfortunately, there is no 4K option. It tops off at that full HD. And in both cases, it just uses your basic digital image stabilization to cut down on Jodo when you're moving and shooting at the same time. And then around front, in both cases, you have a 16 megapixel front facing camera. However, the snazzy thing about Samsung's is that it actually has an LED flash which you can use. So if we just uh, turn that on. As you can see, it's not a smart flash by any stretch of the imagination. It basically just beams an LED light in your face, half blinding you in the process but uh, it's all good if you want to take a bit of a nightclub shot it's something that you can't really do here on the Nokia 7 Plus. And that in a nutshell is the Samsung Galaxy A6 2018 versus the Nokia 7 Plus. So which one floats your boat the best? Which one are you more likely to throw your money at? Nokia or Samsung? Do you like the Samsung bonus edition such as the facial recognition, the one-handed mode, the more compact design as well always helps? Or do you like the nice slick vanilla version of Android here on the Nokia, the fact that it's got that bigger battery, stuff like that. So definitely let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to give us a like and a subscribe if you want to see more comparisons on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers everyone, love you, bye.